Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, Lucas here. I've got a short tutorial on getting started in GeoPix 1.0. In this tutorial, we're going to cover just some really basic things that will help if you've never used GeoPix 1.0 before. Uh, and it's going to be basically walking through the process of getting this panel working and lit up and streaming data from this uh, configuration right here in the viewport. And we're also going to talk about some of the content options and how you can bring those in from an external source such as your hard disk, and uh, it's gonna be a pretty quick one. So let's just dive into it and get started. I'm gonna clear my project so we have nothing going on. And as you can see here, our data transmission is stopped and it's holding last frame. So what we're using for this pixel controller, by the way, it's a Teensy 3.1. It's using the code I have put together here. It's actually a, probably a couple of years old now, maybe more. Uh, if you go to enviraldesign.com, under more, you can find the Teensy 3.1 slash Arduino guide. Um, uh, this will pretty much walk you through getting it set up, so I won't talk too much about it here, uh, but the code is right here. Uh, and the one thing we need to keep in mind is, is this variable here. We'll talk about that in just a couple seconds. <laughs> Uh, but we need to configure uh, GeoPix to match this. So if you're uploading the code as it is, you don't have to worry about this, but if you're tweaking the code to maybe fit your own system a little bit more closely, um, I'll explain how you adjust this in GeoPix in a moment. Uh, additionally, uh, this is the Windows Device Manager, and once you install um, and program the IDE and the Teensy, you're gonna have it showing up here if it's connected to your computer via USB under ports. Uh, it's going to be COM something for you. For me, it's COM4. And we actually need this uh, this COM port address later, and I'll show you why. So, first thing I should mention about uh, the viewport, in case you don't know, is uh, the controls are Alt and right click for move, Alt and left click for rotate, and Alt and middle mouse click for zoom. And you can also just use the scroll wheel to zoom as well. Uh, next, over here in the left bar, we have a couple different tabs. This group down here is pretty uh, pretty self-explanatory. You have a tools uh, and a create tab. Tools is what you can do and create is what you can make. Uh, so we wanna make uh, a device object because that's how we communicate with a device in the real world. Uh, and that's gonna show up in the middle of our grid. I'm gonna use the W key on the keyboard. I'm gonna press it uh, and then activate the translate uh, mode and I'm going to move this device over here just to get it out of the way. You don't have to do this But it's just going to help you see things and uh, select them more later I'm going to open my outliner as well uh, Just to show you you can you can select your objects in the outliner or you can select them in the scene uh, So if I add a fixture, which is the next object we need It's going to show up here in the middle and you'll see it's also here in the outliner So I can uh, select that fixture hit W on my keyboard and then left click to place it. And by the way, if you if you do this by accident, you can use the right mouse button to cancel the transform and go back to where it was. Uh, so if you hop back over here to device, uh, I won't jump into the, the settings too much, just the ones that we need for this, uh, this particular tutorial. Uh, your ID has to match your ID in the fixture. So as you can see, we have a device ID set to one and the device we have an ID of one. That's good and for this tutorial that's as much as I'll talk about it but uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the way you synchronize fixtures with devices in uh, larger projects. So protocol, let's go ahead and set this to serial. Uh, that's the kind of protocol we're going to be using here in this tutorial and uh, then we need to configure our output connection settings a little bit more. If, if you remember we have COM4 so let's go and set that here right now. I uh, just set that to COM4. And then output length, we should also talk about that for a quick second. Um, if you're uploading the code from the website and you're just using it as is, you can just leave this as uh, 400 and 1200 respectively. But if you set this to something else, say you set it to 300, uh, output length is gonna have to be 900. So the way you calculate that is just the number of LEDs times the number of channels, which is three. So you just multiply this number times three and that's the number you put in here. Uh, and that's just how you uh, match up those settings correctly. Number of outputs you actually shouldn't change um, because the this library expects that there's a hard-coded number of eight at all times. And that's just the way it works. If you're kind of doing your own homebrew uh, serial device, maybe you actually do have a number of strips 
parameter that you can change. And in that case, you would want to change this because what it's ultimately doing uh, is it's saying uh, 1200 times 8 is whatever that number is, 9600, I think. And that's the maximum number of bytes it needs to send in a message. So it has to match the serial device for those uh, pixels to light up in the correct order and for things to match. So uh, anyways, that's all we need to really talk about there. Once we get that set up, let's just uh, right click and drag to toggle our active flag on. As you can see, we have uh, some pixels showing up. They're white because we have no uh, mapping currently in our, in our scene. Uh, so the next step that we need to do is add some hulls to our grid here. So let's select our fixture. And you'll notice that when you select a fixture object, and only one at a time, these tabs right here become visible. And these tabs here allow you access to the other subtypes of a fixture. No other object type in GeoPix at this point in time uh, has other sub-object types. So a device does not let you click on these but a fixture does. So if you click on hulls, uh, we have a few things over here that you haven't seen before, but we're not going to talk too much about them uh, in this video. I just want to say uh, that you should have grid snapping on, so make sure that's toggled on, and you want to go from um, over here to hulls and click on hull add mode. And it's going to switch it from select to add. And so once you've done that, uh, go back to your viewport and you can hit the S key on your keyboard um, and you should see that uh, you have these orange dots appearing when you hold S. And these are snap points and when you have nothing else in your scene to draw on they do provide you with something you can click on. So by holding S uh, while in add mode you can just click on uh, two points like that and you're gonna make two hulls uh, one after the other and so if you go back to select mode and you just hold shift and you select both of these hulls. Um, what you want to do next is click generator from selection. Uh, once you've done that, you are uh, going to have a third object here in your outliner, and this is a generator. And a generator object is uh, basically it, it performs a function only when attached to a fixture. Uh, so it has to be attached uh, as, a, as a child here in the outliner or in the world. Uh, and you can tell it's parented too because when you select the fixture this turns blue and if you move this around it's going to move with it. Uh, so a generator has a few settings here. Uh, it can be a pretty complex thing to work with depending on uh, what else you're dealing with but for now all we have to really worry about is X count. Uh, this is set to 10 but we know, uh, well I know this panel has 45 pixels so we want to set this to 45. And so once we've done that uh, you can see that the entire panel now is lighting up. That's great. Uh, that's exactly what we want. Um, and that's pretty much the, the extent of what we'll do for the mapping in this tutorial. And the last thing that we really want to talk about, uh, just briefly, is getting some content of your own on these pixels. So just to show you what's going on and where this texture is currently coming from, if you go to the I.O. tab, uh, you'll be presented with the default ramp. And the default ramp is essentially an undeletable object that you always have access to uh, and when you don't have any projectors in your scene which we're about to make uh, this content gets projected uh, kind of automatically onto your scene and it uses the bounding of your scene so that every pixel will always have content uh, until you make your first projector so uh, this is a good time to go ahead and do that we'll go down here to create uh, we can keep our outliner open and let's just make a projector and once we make that projector it's going to show up right in the middle of our scene uh, so let's go ahead and drag this away from our LEDs uh, so we're actually hitting them with the projector and let's scale this up on X so we cover the whole array uh, and that's great and so we can scale down Z maybe take down the opacity a little bit so we can see through it a little bit easier uh, so now that we've got this projector here, you can move it around and you can see how that texture kind of tracks with the projector. Uh, but now that we've got this projector here, we can actually choose our own content. But first we need to actually bring that content into GeoPix. Uh, the way you do that is you go back to the I.O. tab 
and you uh, you go down here on the left to video clips and you want to choose a folder uh, right now I've already got the folder selected uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and clear this so we can kind of go through this together um, so you want to choose a folder click the dots uh, and just go ahead and navigate on your hard disk to a place where you have some clips uh, let's see where do I have them libraries clips and so they're not going to show up here, but if you know this folder has videos, just hit select folder. Uh, and then once you've done that, you're going to need to click on the actual video clip bin that's uh, up here as the top tab. And when you click on this, you actually have a few things here. And if you've loaded the sample project folder that like comes with GeoPix, you'll probably see the same clips. Uh, so at this point, all we have to do is click on these and add the ones we want to our... Uh, our graph here and once we've done that uh, that's all we have to do in the IO tab we can jump back to the editor uh, and then to apply these clips we actually want to go ahead and open up the IO palette which is this other bin in the top right uh, once we do that you can see the things that you added here in this list and you can just click on them and you can assign them to your projector uh, which will then project them onto your LEDs and then your device will communicate that straight out to your object. So uh, that's essentially it. It's a very simple process to get up and running. You can do it in just a few minutes. Uh, and once you do that, you can start playing with the projectors. You can rotate things. You can uh, scale them, do all kinds of different stuff. Uh, you, can, you can project a texture just across half of your LEDs. Uh, all kinds of stuff. We'll talk more about that in another video. It gets quite fun and interesting and sometimes a little confusing. Uh, but that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, just please let me know down below or shoot me an email. So appreciate it and uh, thanks for watching.